Good morning. Uh, as we gather together, uh, in terms of announcements, uh, the big one would be that uh, if you have uh, orders for geraniums, uh, today is the day. Um, Alan, do you have a box out there? You're just collecting them on the table? Or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, box out on the table and, and put the orders in there. Um, price per plant is, is $5. So, um, uh, this week, uh, actually, well, choir is meeting this evening at uh, 7 uh, rather than on Tuesday um, for our final spring practice here. Um, we actually have a fairly quiet week, however, uh, we do it for those, uh, yeah. Uh, we have Presbytery meeting uh, on Tuesday evening at Shakeleyville. Uh, we're, Sue is back, back here in the back and she's actually in a, a chair that we'll hope is moderately comfortable for her. Um, you made it out twice already this week, Sue. Does that get you any time off from PT or? Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, but be thinking about Sue on Tuesday as she has her final meeting as, as moderator or presbytery. It hardly seems like it was back in the fall already that we were doing her installation service here. Uh, but, but we've got that. Um, we have uh, next week. Uh, newsletter articles due on Tuesday, uh, the 30th, and then we have um, on the 4th, uh, graduation Sunday, uh, and you can see the, the dates to add to your calendar on the uh, inside page on, on the bullet. Uh, do we have any others at the moment, any other announcements at the moment to make? Dory. We'll have, <coughs> excuse me, we'll have a quick Christian Ed meeting right after church. A quick Christian Ed meeting after, right after church. So for any of us who are, let's not run away. Um, any others, from folks? Yeah, Tom. I'd like to introduce my family that's here. I have one daughter, Queen Maggie. Uh, George is on the very end. And his wife, Debbie. And then Tracy. <laughs> and Mike, her husband, and then Rex, and, and Tracy said, aside my wife. And you're all here because of our anniversary. Hey, congratulations. How many how many years now with you guys? 68. 68. Wow, that's wonderful. Right. Yeah. And we're glad to have all of you guys with us. I was going to recognize them, but I'm glad. I, I, Tracy and Tracy I have. You two are easy to, to, to place and not get that messed up in my head. So I'm thankful to you, Tom, for having, having done that. So, And, and, and that's a, a great place to segue into uh, joys and concerns, but that is a great joy. Uh, 68 years for Tom and Lina. Um, in terms of, of uh, well, the other joy we've got here is, as I said, we've got uh, Sue with us this, this morning, and, and she's made it out twice already this week, uh, and that's, we're, we're greatly thankful for that. Um, Linda Knight uh, made it through her surgery well. Um, she actually is coming along with remarkably little to no pain. Uh, however, the reason for that uh, in large part is that she actually, when she had that break last week, that was the completion of a break that was already started because of her osteoporosis. Um, and when it started to swell and she was in all the pain and had to come back from camp, was because that was when it fully fractured through and yet she didn't fall and she didn't break anything else. Uh, they were able to, to get, surgically get the ball reattached to the, to the femur 
uh, and they cleaned out everything while they were at it, and she said, wow, this is kind of neat. So, um, so, so we're thankful for that. Uh, keep uh, Joe, uh, Joe Baker in your prayers coming up on Thursday the 1st. He's got to have another doctor's appointment. He's been having progressively worse problems with his hands, and they've discovered it's because of some just shot discs in his neck that he's going to have to have dealt with there. Uh, they've got to continue to check that, and one of the leads in his internal TENS unit in his back is either misfiring or has come unimplanted, and so he's got to have that something done with that, but they have to figure out what's going on first. Um, Uh, keep, look. Just if you see Dory, uh, don't shake her hand too vigorously. <laughs> she had a bit of an owie and had one of having stitches, having to have stitches, and she's got some doctor's appointments coming up. Uh, what other ones do we have at the moment? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Kathy. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Ann Trainer is in the hospital oh. again. She has cellulitis. Ah. Who's that? Ann okay. Trainer. Ann Trainer in hospital with cellulitis. I hate that word. Having gone through it, I hate that word, cellulitis. Uh, any other? Yeah, Marie. My mom, Helen Morsha, um, finally was able to get out of rehab for her hip and came home two weeks ago, so that's why you haven't seen me. I've been living with her, um, just trying to get her back to somewhat normal. Uh, but she's been pretty depressed because she's very active even though she's dating her. So dealing with that part of it too is she just feels like she's a big burden. She's healing. Okay, well, we're, we, we'll keep all of that in prayer, and, and we're, we're glad you were able to be there, but glad that you're able to be here. Yes. So. Others? Okay. All right. Uh, well, let us prepare to join our hearts in worship as we listen to the prayer. Thank you.
joined together on this Ascension Sunday. As we join together, let us join together in our call to worship. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the, the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the set, sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord, the Lord is high above all nations, and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit in princes and the princes of his people. Lord our God, we seek your presence, we seek your comfort as we join together on this morning, this ascension morning, as we have joys, we have we have bereavements that, that we lift before you as well, and we ask that you would touch us with the Father's love and care and compassion, that indeed we might see you more fully through your Son and his completed work on our behalf, and that we would know all of that in the presence and the power of your Holy Spirit raining down upon and within us that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. All this we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, blessed now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Let us join together in singing Eternal Father Strong to Save. We know that without you and your grace, we would be utterly undone. 
Yet all too often we forget you and act and think in ways that deny both you and your loving grace. We pretend that our lives are completely self-directed. We neglect our relationship to you and with each other. We confess our sins, faults, and flaws. We humbly ask you to cover us with the blood of your Son's sacrifice. Forgive us and heal us, we pray. Transform us so that we may be fit dwellings for you and effective and useful tools for service in your kingdom. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. Yet Christ died for us. He rose for us. He reigns in power for us and he prays for us. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that one is a new creation. The old life is past and gone and a new life has begun. Let us give glory to God for the forgiveness we receive through his Son. Understand the scripture. And he said to them, 
Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer, and on the third day arise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the word of the Lord. come on 
and we see and understand in ways that we could not before. We give you thanks that you have done all this and continue to do it for us. We ask that you would make us useful. We ask this all in your son's name.
when you were giving me the thumbs up, Jerry, I should have checked that more carefully again, even as you were giving me the thumbs up. The mic was off. I couldn't hear me in the monitors. That's why I was asking. You could hear me all right, but uh, I guess I was projecting. But, uh, as we, how many of you have ever watched an accident happen? Okay. Have you ever seen it at a four or six way intersection? Um, and, and if you have, there's one in, in South Park at, on Corrigan Drive, where Corrigan Drive, which is on Route 88, gets, there, there are five separate feeder roads. It's like a, it really is a five or six way intersection. And there's a light, and sitting at that light can take up to six to seven minutes. Um, and if it's backed up at the light, it can take, 10 or 12, and you get sitting there and you wind up not paying attention, and people lose track of where they are, and suddenly they just drive out. Um, there also happens to be a fairly active crosswalk at that intersection. Now, that's, that's not, there really aren't that many pedestrian accidents there, but if you have an accident at that light, there are almost always witnesses. But their perceptions are going to be different. Because people are standing at different points. And it, it's bad enough at a, at a two-way intersection or a th three or even four-way intersection. But you get five, six places to stand. You've got all kinds of different views. And it takes the, the police hours sometimes to reconstruct what happened if there's any kind of serious damage or injury in one of the, those accidents there because there are just so many different perspectives and people don't fully understand what was going or they're convinced they knew it all. Now, think about that in terms of this passage. As they're kept coming in, as we're coming in at the beginning of this passage at verse 36, and the disciples are gathered again. It's, it's the resurrection and they've They've heard at least the beginnings of things, but they're not fully grasping it yet. They don't know what they have seen and what they haven't seen. And so when Jesus comes, comes in among them, they're a little freaked out. Actually, it says that, that they were startled and frightened and thought they had seen a spirit. And, you know, they're having that reaction that we know and we, we read a couple of weeks back that, that Thomas has. I won't believe unless I see the wounds in his hands and feet and the wound in his side. And they have that same reaction. And Jesus says to them, see my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, touch me and see. For the spirit does not have flesh and bones that you see I have. That's an amazing touch point. It is a, a touch point. Um, and Abby, I got to thank you. If, if, Brett, if Brett picked out his shirt this morning, he picked out the perfect one. If you picked it out for him, thank you, because that, that, just, that was a great focal question. That was the one I was looking for all week long and wasn't finding. But we have that, that reference point. We have to ask we have to ask ourselves, I must ask you a question. Because we can wind up coming at this and seeing that there is a physical reality going on. This isn't just, and Jesus makes that point, touch me, see, I'm not just the spirit. I am not Jesus the friendly ghost. I am here, in the here and now, Touch me, see that I am here with you. I am not dead, I am alive. I'll even eat with you. You have any fish here? Give me some fish, I'll eat with you and you can watch me. You can join me. And in doing that, he can show to them what, exactly who he is and what's going on. And yet they're still kind of mystified. So Jesus gives that, them 
some more of that answer when he says, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opens their minds. Suddenly he's interpreting, he, he had said these things to them before, but they just weren't getting it. It was not making sense to them. Uh, how many of us have seen uh, drone footage on the local news? Because there, there are drones everywhere now. And you, you get a whole different perspective to what's going on when you're looking from the air than you get from on the ground. And if you think about that five or six way intersection again, it makes a little more sense. The person looking on from above can put the pieces together a whole lot more easily than someone who's standing over on the extreme opposite intersection from, from, from another person over here as to what happened in the middle. You can see things from above that you just cannot see on ground level. And this is Jesus saying to them, now let me give you the bird's eye view. Here in the news, and we hear commentators say it more and more, and I, I never, I, I don't think for a long time I've heard such an overused phrase, but now for the view from 30,000 feet. Okay, well, but that's not a bad way to look at it, that we can see those things. And Jesus opens their minds to understand the scriptures. Wow, suddenly, and it is, is even as, as Meta said, yeah, fractions, mystifying me. And yet there comes that point when suddenly your eyes are open. I know for me that I, I honestly there are days I wonder how, based on my SAT scores, I made it to college. You know, I had, this may not surprise you that I had an almost perfect score on the verbal section of the SATs. Um, on math, I scored somewhere around upper level plankton. It really was that bad. Um, you know, I had to take not just one, but two remedial math classes at Slippery Rock after I got up here to the university. And it still wasn't quite kicking in until I had to take a statistics class as a poli-sci major. And suddenly, all these algebra things that, and word problems that had mystified me for years in algebra and made no sense to me because I didn't really care if a train leaving from New York City and a train leaving from Chicago at the same time are coming at each other at 120 miles an hour and run into the, each other in the middle of Ohio, how big is the debris field? I don't know. I don't care. But suddenly I had things to which I could, I, I could really apply what the math meant. The light went on. This is that moment for the disciples. As they are gathered there together and Jesus opens those scriptures and says to them, okay, when I was telling you X from the prophets, from, from the law of the prophets, when I was explaining to you that I am the lamb, of, uh, I am the lamb, that I am the one on, on the pole who must be lifted up high that he may be seen, that I had to suffer and die. I would be the suffering servant in Isaiah. All of those things suddenly come and take new meaning. Now, why is it that, that, that we celebrate the Passover Seder on Monday, Thursday? Because it takes on a new meaning for us. Our eyes are open and we understand more fully what, what it is that we do in the Lord's Supper and why we do what we do. It is that new awareness that comes to us. And it says, Thus it was written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. Repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. This was new and radical. Not only are they making the, the connections, and finally seeing it clearly, but now you have that moment when having made the connection, suddenly you can see how they apply in new ways. 
Have you had that breakthrough moment when you can look and you can say, okay, I finally got the concept. Oh, so I could use it here and here and here. And wow, isn't that really cool? And then this is Jesus saying to them, look, you are to go out and proclaim forgiveness. Where? You're to proclaim forgiveness based on repentance, not just here, but to all nations. To go out to all people, to say, this is what has been being prepared for thousands of years and now has been realized in your sight. Now, here is what's coming up and what's coming due. And this is where, you know, you, you go for that real up-close look and then you pan out. And you see things in a new way and then you get back down into the nitty-gritty. And yet you're still trying to figure out entirely what's going on. And Jesus pulls that together and says, no, you are my witnesses. Why was it so important that he stressed the physicality of the resurrection? Because he wanted folks to really understand that this really happened. It wasn't a dream. It wasn't a delusion. It wasn't a nightmare. It happened in real life. And now you have seen it. You can touch, touch and feel. And knowing that, with conviction and with understanding, you can apply it. That you can say, this is what I saw and this is what it means. And again, we can do that with a conviction that takes on a life of its own. Why is it that we teach our, ourselves and our kids memory verses? and favorite passages, and we commit them to memory. Because even if we don't remember them or fully understand them as we're memorizing them and getting the contours down, once the situation opens up before us in the right way, we will understand what we have and we can say, aha, now I have it and I can apply it. And that's when Jesus then says, okay, you are my witnesses. Behold, I am sending my, the promise of my Father upon you. So it's coming. Wait for it. Until you were fully clothed with power from, from on high. But it hasn't happened yet. But they're able, understanding enough now that they don't go home saddened anymore. They're not mystified in the way they were mystified before. They're going forward and saying, I have a great joy. I have thanksgiving. We had the opportunity twice this week to hear of testimony and to remember testimony that we've known for years. We, we had the testimony of Linda's life and her words. We had the testimony that Dave Dunkerley had bidden me to give to people as he was coming into the final hours and he was beginning to have the pieces click. And they were making sense for him. And he said, tell people this is where I am. Share this. Please. This is that moment when, when, when things transform. As we were talking about Linda, as we were talking about David, I saw people's expressions change in midstream. You ever have rain on a sunny day? You wind up driving through it and that's, that's when you see rainbows? You know, from up here, you all are sitting back there, but from up here, I can see when people are busy crying and then all of a sudden they laugh at the same time. And it's that kind of a change. It happens in a new way. This is what they're preparing for. This is how they are as they go back to the upper room and prepare. But they can go lifting up, as he lifts his hands up upon them to bless them. And they can go and worship 
with great joy and bless, and bless God, even as they watch him depart from them again. But this time, they know that he is not dead. They know that he is alive and he is going to prepare a place. This is the thing for which we, upon which we stake our lives, but it's, it's what our hope is rooted in. And as we do, we also reckon on the fact that we have been called as second level witnesses. Because we've seen the playback. We've seen the view from 30,000 feet. We've seen how it changes people's lives and what that means in the life, not only of the individual, but of the community. So we have to ask ourselves continually the question, we are witnesses of these things, now what? Well, this is the now what. This is the, the waiting time, the preparation time, as we prepare next week to look, and look at and celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. We are his witnesses. Let us think on what that means and how that will apply. Amen. <laughs> Let us stand and affirm what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, please be seated. Let us join our hearts and minds together before the throne of grace where we are assured that our prayers of faith are heard and will receive an answer. Lord our God, in a world where all too frequently we see unbelief and confusion when we see darkness and ugliness around us, we are reminded afresh that you not only came among us as one of us and died for us, but that you were also resurrected for us and that it was a genuine resurrection and that in that you prepare our hearts and minds to be continually renewed by the presence of your Holy Spirit at work in us. And we, we prepare to celebrate that afresh next week. And in the, the crossroads of that moment, as we contemplate what that means, we see the situations in the world around us that unfold at the large level to the local level. We see those places where that word can and must be applied. Lord, we ask that you would move in those situations even as we give you our thanks and praise for the definite testimony that you have provided for us. We ask that you would be with those who are in authority over us in the world and in the church and that you would touch those leaders. But for those who lead us in the world that 
they might genuinely seek the best good of those placed in their care, that they might seek to wield the sword, not for their, glory, their own glory, but for the restrained evil and the promotion of good, seeking to follow the path that you lay before them, that our leaders within the church might recognize continually that we have that call to witness based on a firmly established promise, made and delivered, and yet to be delivered. Lord, we ask in a particular way that you would hear our thanks and praise. For 68 years of love and faith together for Tom and Nina, we rejoice in that in a day when that is increasingly rare, and yet it is so welcome to hear. Lord, we ask that you would be with Sue, even as we, re as we rejoice in her being with us this morning and in her continued recovery. We ask that you would be with Joe Baker and with, with, as he prepares to hear more information on what's upcoming for him, with Debbie as she makes arrangements for upcoming surgery. Lord, we ask that you would be with Dory in this injury to her thumb and that you would bring your healing upon that. We ask that you would be with Al and Ann Trainer, particularly with Ann at the moment as she is in hospital with cellulitis. As we know how, many of us know how painful that can be and how frustrating and we ask that you would bring your comfort. We rejoice in Helen's release from rehab and at the devotion of Marie, thankful that, that she can be there for her and asking your continued and abounding grace for recovery there. We are thankful for how well things have gone for Linda Knight, even as we marvel that she was not hurt or, or more seriously injured in a fall of some kind and that she has good prospect for swift recovery. Lord, in a particular way, we ask that you would be with Dave, Beatty, and, and with the whole family, and with Becky, and with her family, as they grieve, as we grieve, the loss of Linda and of David, and yet it is not an ultimate loss. As we grieve, we do grieve as those who have suffered loss, but not as those with no hope, but rather with every hope in the resurrection to eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, we come before you with these and oh so many other prayers and joys and concerns. We ask that you would hear us trusting the promise of your spirit your promise through your word that the spirit intercedes with groans too deep for words when we don't know what to ask for. Lord, believing that, we make bold to come before you praying as your son has taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us come before the Lord, bringing our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings, in joyful thanks for what he has freely given us by his love 
and His grace. stand and bear witness and testimony that we have received in song as we sing God of our fathers.
clearly as he has told the disciples that we are witnesses to these things, that we wait continually upon the power of the Holy Spirit descending upon us and we live into that. Let us go forth and spread our testimony as witnesses wherever we go in all that we do and say. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.